and we're recording. So, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this Let's Talk virtual town hall on the 2020 general elections, making sure we have a safe and secure election and making sure that you are all informed about the election process. We're joined today by Election Services Director, Corinne Duncan. So thank you very much for joining us, Corinne. Thank you for having me, Max. So I'm sure this is a very easy time of the year for you and your staff. So I'll make this introduction quick so you can get back to the election. Um, one, I just want to let everyone know who's watching, whether you're on Zoom or watching on Facebook, that this is a community town hall. So I'll be monitoring both Zoom and Facebook for community questions. And we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. So if you're watching at home and you have a question, type it in as a Facebook comment. So otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So Corinne, I'm gonna ask you the most asked question that I've been getting about the election first is what is an election look like during COVID-19? What unique problems does it create and how is election services reacting to them? So yes, uh, 2020 definitely was predicted to be an unprecedented election as far as size, but we didn't expect to be conducting it during a pandemic. So this is a, a unique challenge for us. And uh, in Buncombe County, we were actually lucky because we were one of the 17 counties in North Carolina that had a second primary. It was small, but it gave us the opportunity to run an election for the first time ever during a pandemic at a small scale. So we got to learn a lot and are applying that to the general election in November. So there's two ways that you can vote in person during this election. One is early voting and one is on election day. And all of the procedures that we're following for the in-person voting will be happening for both of those voting methods. So when you arrive at the polls in either way, you will be greeted by a poll worker who will have um, offer you hand sanitizer and they'll have a mask for you if you would like it. And then we'll also be using single use pens that we'll hand to you to use throughout the process and take home with you. When you uh, go into the polling location, it will look a little different because things will be spread out. Um, there will be all the poll workers in their PPE. So they'll have masks on, they'll be wearing gloves. Uh, the check-in stations will have those clear plexiglass barriers that you've been seeing around. So you'll see some changes that way. Uh, you'll also see that the poll, poll workers will be cleaning all the equipment between uses. So every time a voter uses a voting booth or touches the uh, voting equipment, that will be cleaned between each use too. We'll of course be following social distancing guidelines. So the voting booths will be spread out and we'll be encouraging voters to make sure that they're six feet apart. Uh, and just to uh, let you kind of remind everybody about that, that uh, long lines are always something that people watch for at polling locations. And uh, so it's going to maybe look a lot longer than it has in the past because of the six foot distancing. So don't let that scare you. And we're lucky in Buncombe County too to have uh, during early voting, we have a weight map. So you can go and look at any of our uh, locations and see how many people are there. We do the same on election day, but we have that as a list. So you'll also be able to see how many people are at a voting location when you're going to vote. How often is that weight map, uh, map updated? The weight map is updated every 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, something that you mentioned in something else we talked about before is while nobody can be turned away to vote, it's strongly encouraged that if you are voting to wear your mask, to social distance. That's correct. So I think what you're getting at is the state uh, has given us direction that we can turn away no voters. And so if someone does appear and they choose not to wear a mask, we're not going to turn them away. But it is very important for us that everyone feels safe at, when they go to vote. And so we are strongly encouraging wearing a mask, and we will have that readily available for voters when they show up. Okay. So a, a, a popular method of voting this year that we've always been available, but this year is astronomical, is absentee mail-it ballot. I 
because of COVID-19, people think the safest way to vote is by mailing in your ballot. Can you talk about the process of absentee mail-in ballots? Absolutely. So you're right. Absentee by mail has always been available and it's no excuse. So anyone can do it. And it has become very popular this year for people who weren't sure about whether they wanted to vote in person. So the process goes that you request an absentee ballot. So that's something that I want to make clear because there was some confusion over whether ballots were going to get sent out to every voter in North Carolina, and that's not true. You have to request one. And you can do that either by using the paper form on our website, sending that in or dropping it off in person, or we have a portal now online that um, started last week where you can do that directly online. So you can fill out the form and sign it there. And that actually cuts out a lot of steps for us, which right now is very important as in 2016, we had 7,500 requests approximately. And now we have with nearly two months left uh, until the election, 35,000 requests. And those take a long time for us to process. So cutting out that little piece is helpful. Also, a lot of groups have been assisting in sending out absentee request forms, which is perfectly legal. It's just fine. They're trying to uh, accomplish their goals and there's nothing um, in the law that stops them from doing that but they've been sending out a lot of them. So you may have gotten a lot of them in the mail. And if you have filled one out, you, that's all you have to do. We're taking care of you. Just fill out one form. Uh, if you fill out more than one, it, it doesn't hurt you at all. It does slow down our process though. And I will say that there were concerns of whether or not these ballots were um, correct or accurate. So if you have any questions, you can always check online to make sure that what you got is a real absentee ballot request form, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. You can compare the request form to what we have online. Absolutely. So that's the first step of the absentee process. Once you have completed your request form, then we process it. We make sure that all of the information matches what we have in our system. And then we'll send you a ballot in the mail. And when you get your ballot in the mail, it'll come with instructions. You'll need a witness and you'll have to sign the ballot. Uh, there's an envelope that you sign. Once you have completed that process, then you have two options. You can either drop it back in the mail or you can drop it off in person. And for dropping it off in person, you can do that at our office. And we currently have a dedicated line for picking up absentee ballot requests. This started happening yesterday was the first day that we got uh, ballots back, which is very exciting. So uh, voting is in full swing now. We had 260 people come by our office yesterday and drop off ballots. So that's very exciting. So you have that option. You can also drop your ballot off at an early voting location at any of the 16 early voting locations. One thing I wanna say about that is there's no dedicated line at an early voting location. The priority there are people going to vote in person at early voting. So if you want a dedicated service like that, come to our office. So do you have to be open for an absentee ballot to be dropped off at your office or do you have a drop box you can use? There are no drop boxes for absentee ballots. Thank you for asking that, Max. So when you drop off your ballot, that's a very uh, important process and it needs to be done officially. So you'll be handing your ballot to an elections official and they're gonna ask you to sign a log and then they'll check it in. So make sure, you know, if somebody else is asking you or saying that they're gonna pick up your ballot for you, that's not okay. It's only in the mail or giving it to an elections official. And if you drop it off in the mail, you have to have a witness sign the envelope or something, right? Whether you drop it in the mail or drop it off in person, a witness must sign the envelope. Okay. So there is a lot of concern about absentee ballots in, the, in terms of what if it's not counted? Are there things associated with an absentee ballot that you can make that you think is best practices that would make it so it wasn't counted? 
So when you receive your absentee ballot, there are instructions in there. So make sure that you read those carefully. Things that we've run into in the past is people just forgetting to sign. So make sure that you're doing that and that you have uh, filled the witness requirement and the, for the witness requirement they sign and they put their address too. So just make sure that you're doing all of the steps that you need to and it's outlined in the instructions that you'll get. And you can always feel free to call us too if you have any questions about it. There's also a lot of concerns going on in the country of can the Postal Service handle this amount of volume? So what is your what is your recommendation to those where I know you said it, you can just drop it off, but is that pretty much the best recommendation if you're unsure of the medium? So the post office has uh, been in contact with us and the state board. They've been doing this for months now, which has been great. So we've had a lot of communication. They are obviously under high pressure, just like we are. So it's not just elections mail uh, that they're getting, but a lot of um, people are staying at home and they're shopping online and there's all kinds of mail going through the mail service. So this has been something that's been watched and the postal service recommends that you send in a week earlier than deadlines. So for instance, our uh, deadline for an absentee request form is October 27th, so send it in by the 20th. Uh, with ballots, we have to have ballots postmarked on election day. However, we have to receive that ballot into our office by that Friday. So if you put it in the mail it's, and it gets postmarked but it doesn't get to us, then we won't be able to count it. So make sure you get your ballots in early or, or drop them off at our office. I do want to say, however, that we sent out 11,000 ballots on the first day. I'm very proud of that. That was a lot of work for our office. Uh, much, much, much more than we have ever done in the past. And people, that was on Friday, and people received their ballots, many people, on Saturday. So that was a very quick turnaround. Uh, and we actually received four ballots back in the mail on Tuesday. So the turnaround is, um, it is faster than we expected to. But still, it's just better to be early. Definitely agree with that. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about all of the ways to vote. But before I get into another method of voting, I wanted to ask you about what multi-language options you have with ballots. Do they exist? Do they have to be requested? And how can you request one if they do exist? So in North Carolina, there are certain thresholds that a county has to meet before they're required to provide things in different languages. And uh, Buncombe County doesn't, hasn't met that, those thresholds. However, we still provide all the ballot marking instructions in Spanish. So when you uh, have an absentee ballot or when you show up to, uh, to vote, those instructions are there for you. Great. We, th this issue has been brought up several times and, that, and I think that some progress is being made on it in, at the state level. So I, I think that we'll probably see movement on this in the future. Great. So we've talked about um, absentee ballot by mail. Uh, so let's talk about early voting now. So can you talk about the process of early voting? When does it start? How long does it last? Wh where can people go to do it? Absolutely. So early voting in Buncombe County, we're proud of our program here. We have a very large early voting program. The State Board of Elections has required that counties serve 20,000 voters per early voting location, and we serve 12,000. So we're, we um, really have things covered in that area. So this year for the general election for early voting, it starts October 15th and goes through the 31st. We're gonna be open Mondays through Fridays from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And also on the weekends, we'll have a shift. So Saturdays and Sundays will be open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for both of the weekends that that stretch covers. And on the last Saturday of early voting, uh, October 31st, we'll be open a little bit earlier, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
Now that day tends to be a very busy day for us. So once again, if you can vote earlier, please do. We talked a little bit earlier, Max, about the weight map. So that remember that that's available and you can uh, go online to our website to see which location has the uh, least number of people, if you like. So you can vote at any early voting location in the county. So on election day, you have to vote at your precinct, but early voting, you can vote at any of the early voting sites. That's correct, yes. And we have locations at the mall and the outlets, so you can do your shopping at the same time. Uh, and we also picked larger sites just so that we could make sure that we spread out and, and were able to attain the social distancing that we wanted to. So we've also got a location at the Harris Cherokee, formerly known as the Civic Center uh, as well. We have curbside voting at those locations too. The curbside, however, is meant for people who can't physically go into the voting locations. So due to age or disability, you can't go into the locations. So that's, that's what those uh, sites are for or prioritized for. And this was a conversation we had earlier too, where somebody asked a great question where, what if you decide to wait till election day and on election day, something happens, your car breaks down or you get sick and you're not comfortable going out anywhere. Um, can you use the drive up um, location dedicated to the people who need it for physical reasons? Um, so what would be your best advice? So the first is if you are worried about not being able to go on election day, use a different voting method. So vote early or, or vote absentee. Um, there are some very uh, narrow specific provisions that can be used for people who suddenly get sick or you know they're meant for uh, maybe a car accident or something that they know they're not going to be able to vote on election day and early voting has already passed but that's not on election day you would have to know that you were unable to vote on election day and that you would come to our office and uh, we would help with that but the best option is to vote early or vote by absentee. Okay. Um, someone asked, can they give their absentee ballot to their spouse? Um, can you take it to the neighbors? What about uh, a child who's in college? These are uh, going back uh, another topic to the absentee ballots, but I figured it's best to talk about them before we get too far out of the absentee realm. Absolutely. I appreciate that because that's one of the ballot security measures. So only the voter or a near relative, and that does include spouse, can turn in a ballot. So no giving it to your neighbor, no delivering for your neighbor, no one picks up a whole bunch of ballots and brings them in to us. This is the voter or a near relative only dropping off an absentee ballot. And uh, one of the questions that we got on Facebook concerning absentee ballots was the idea of if someone's not feeling comfortable going inside of election services, if they're outside, will someone be able to come outside and pick and grab it for them? Yes, that is what we've been doing. So we've had, we have a big tent sitting outside and a bunch of parking spaces and we have people uh, at our office. We, we intended that they'd be sitting at their desk and when they saw someone coming up to the, to the uh, window, we would come and serve them. But there've been so many people that we've been on our feet all day long. So there's somebody out there taking care of people all day under the tent. Uh, and we've got uh, plenty of parking for that. We do also have, if you are unable to get out of your car, we have a uh, curbside area that will come to your car too. Is this at early voting locations too, or just for election services? Thank you, Max. You're asking great questions. At curbside voting, at, at early voting, we will not be accepting absentee ballots at curbside. We have to make sure that that curbside area is prioritized for people who physically can't get out of their car to vote. Okay, so if you wanna drop off your absentee ballot, you either have to go inside an early voting site or you can do curbside at election services. That's correct. Okay, 
So is there anything else that I'm missing about early voting that you can talk about? There's 16 locations, correct, you mentioned? Yes, 16 locations. You can find all of those locations on our website. I could read them off. No, that's okay. Uh, I think if you go to buncombecounty.org slash vote, um, there's, it's really easy to navigate. You can see sample ballots. You can see where your election is. You can look up your voter information and make sure it's accurate. Like everything's very easy to find there if you're watching. Okay, so we talked about absentee by mail and we talked about early voting. Now let's talk about election day. It's a busy day for sure with months and months of preparation for you and your staff. When it is election day, so everyone can mark their calendars. Um, uh, when is election day, so everyone can mark their calendars? And where can people vote? Are the same safety precautions available as you mentioned before? So election day is November 3rd. That's a Tuesday. Uh, and there are 80 polling locations across the county. And you do have to go to your assigned polling location. That will that helps spread voters evenly across the county and make sure nobody has to drive very far. Uh, and yes, all the same COVID procedures that are at early voting and that are at, at our office. Uh, we're following these protocols everywhere because we need to be safe too. There's not a lot of people who know how to run elections, so we need to make sure that we're being healthy too. Definitely. And polling locations will be open from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. So uh, where's the line cut off? Another great question. So if you show up at a, a polling location at 7.30 p.m., then a worker will come out and will take down all the names of the people waiting in line at 7.30 p.m. and all of those people will be able to vote. Okay, you're gonna be open until the last person who was in line at 7.30 gets to vote. That is correct, no matter how long that line is. Okay. Um, and yeah, okay. So, and people have to go to their sites and if they need help finding their site again, if they need help finding their site, the, the, a, a tool that I really like people to use is the voter lookup tool. You can go on there, look up your name, and it'll, if you have a common name, it'll give a list of a bunch of people with that same name, but it'll have the county or middle name, and you'll find, your, you'll find yourself on there and click on it. And that opens up a bunch of information. You can review your address there to make sure that that's correct. You can see sample ballots, which is uh, important this election. We can talk about uh, why sample ballots are extra important this election too. Uh, and you can look up your polling location there. So that's a great place if you have internet access to be able to look up information. If you can also see what elections you voted in. So there's a lot of interesting stuff there. But if you don't have internet access, you can call us or you can stop by our office and we'll help you out. What's your phone number so people can call? 828-250-4200. And we're located at 77 McDowell Street in Asheville. So why are sample ballots important? So sample ballots are a, a copy of what's going to be on your specific ballot. So each person in Buncombe County lives in different districts. So uh, a good example of that is Buncombe County has three commissioners districts. So you'll have, depending on where you'll live, you'll have different things on your ballot. So you want to go and find your specific ballot so that you know all of the things that you, uh, the people and the referendums that you are voting on in any election. So that's just helpful to help you research before you go to the polls. But it's especially important this election because we want to encourage people not to, to, to not be in the polling location for long periods of time. So if you can look at your sample ballot, do your research, come prepared, then that will help you not be in the voting enclosure for a long period of time. And you're completely allowed to take that sample ballot in there, in, in the polling location with you. Okay, is there anything you can't take into a polling location with you? You cannot take pictures, 
or have communications in a polling location. That doesn't mean that you can't have your cell phone. You just can't be using it. You can't take pictures. It's illegal you, to take a picture of a ballot. I want everybody to know that. I know it's uh, a particularly exciting thing that we're doing, and uh, and I'm very excited about it. I, when people started voting the Monday and bringing ballots in, it was just it was fantastic. So uh, I, I want to take pictures of everything. I'm one of those people. So, <laughs> but no taking pictures of your ballot. Uh, and, and another sad thing is that we don't have the I voted sticker. That was something that people used a lot for social media. You'll have a pen and we're working on making it say I voted on that pen. So you might have something. <laughs> but you're not giving out the stickers because? Well, we're not giving out the stickers because of the, the close contact. It's not, a, you know, a pen is a necessary thing for voting, but the I voted sticker is not. So we decided against doing that this year. Well, people will have to get creative with their post-voting selfies. They will. <laughs> so we have 16 early voting locations and what, over 80 or 80 election day locations? Mm -hmm, 80. That is a lot to orchestrate. So tell me about your need for poll workers. During early voting, we are going to be using 275 poll workers to staff those 17 sites. We have actually filled those. We're lo still looking for 15 backup workers. For election day, we need over 600 workers and we are close to filling those too. We have about 40 spots left and then I'm hoping for 50 backups. Awesome. And yes, we are so thankful. One of the silver linings of all of the attention that this election is getting with uh, COVID is that there was a, a difficulty finding poll workers because of the uh, age risk category. And we have just had an outpouring of people wanting to help us. It's, we're very, very grateful for that. And I hope that we get a long list that we'll be able to pull from in the future too. I think that this is something that is really positive for elections in general to get new people involved in the process. And what, when we have had poll workers start, it's a hard day. I am not going to lie about that. You start at 5.30 in the morning, and if you're a chief judge, you're bringing back supplies, and you're probably not going to be home till midnight. It's a very long, intense day, but people tend to have a very positive experience. You're serving your community. People are very thankful that you're there, and I think the more people that we can get involved in that process and understand and have a direct link to the that the it's the core of democracy that and have people have actual experience with that the, the more the better. So is it too late to sign up to be a poll worker? It's not too late definitely not too late and in we are actually needing um, more Republicans so at a polling location they're balanced by party so there's all these checks by law and one of those checks is that there are representatives from both parties at every location. And so if you are uh, affiliated with the Republican Party and are interested in signing up, we really need you. Yeah, and, and to help give them more information about it, what does it involve to be a poll worker? Do you have to do some training? You get paid? Mm -hmm. So early voting, both types, we do training. Early voting it involves a full day of training and you have a 17 day commitment where you'll be doing six hour shifts. And that is an hourly position. And you'll get paid $12 an hour. On election day, you uh, do training as well and you set up the polling location the night before the election. So you'll get together with your team, you'll set up the site, make sure that all of the equipment is working and that you're ready to go in the morning. And then you have that big long day. So you'll be there at 7.30 in the, or at 6, 5.30 in the morning, 
until at least 7.30 at night and you'll help take down the site and get the chief judge headed out to check in supplies. And that is a flat fee on election day. You are, uh, as a chief judge, you would be paid more, $260 a day. Uh, as an assistant, it was $175. And who would make good election workers? I know this year there was a big fear of the, with COVID-19 because the majority of election workers were older individuals. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying to promote as much as we can. Anyone can be a poll worker, any age, like students. What are, your, what are some, some good election workers that you're trying to let people know about? So good election workers are people who are excited about the process who remain nonpartisan, who are welcoming to everyone, people who are good on computers. We are, all of our check-in processes are on a computer. People with really good customer service skills. Uh, and it's a really great way to get an insight into the system. I think that there is a lot of worry about uh, election security and that sort of thing. And I feel that if you come in and see how things work, that you'll be very happy with how it does. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's also a great place for you. Where can you go to, to, to register or apply or what I guess apply would be the right term. You can call our office as always 828-250-4200 uh, or you can go to our website and we have a, an application there where you're putting in your email and contact information and then we'll get back to you. And that also has all of our contact information there uh, with our recruiters. So we've talked about COVID prep, we've talked about absentee by mail, we've talked about early voting, the importance of uh, preparing for your voting. Um, what's, a, what's another good way for someone to prepare for voting? I, I, I think it's important that we encourage people to check out to make sure their voting information is correct and that they know where to go. Yeah, so the first prerequisite to voting in North Carolina is that you're registered. So we need to make sure that uh, you're, you're registered and you can go online and check that. Again, you can call our office too, we can help you. Uh, to get registered, you just fill out a registration form and get it back to our office by Friday, October 9th. You can do that by mail or, or handing it to us in person. And make sure if you got married or if you moved, is, do you have information to update? Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's much better if you do that before you go to vote. You can do that in person when you're voting, but then that takes longer at the, at the voting location. So being up to date before you arrive is best. If you do happen to miss the deadline to register, and we hope you don't, we hope you register early, you can actually register and vote during early voting. It's called same day registration. So that's an option if you miss that deadline. Great. Okay, well, we also talked about poll workers and that now. So what are some things that we haven't previously mentioned that you think are very important for citizens to know involving the election? I think that something that we haven't talked about is misinformation. There is a lot of um, talk on social media or on TV about different topics. And whether it's intentional misinformation or just a misinterpretation of something, bad information gets out there. So I really want to encourage people to go to the source. Make sure you, if you have a question about anything that you are going to talk with us here in Buncombe County at your local office, or uh, look, go to the state board's website or call them and make sure that you're getting information from the source. Uh, I think just going over general election security might help um, ease people's fears. We, uh, in the media, there has been some reports about uh, attempting to vote illegally, voting twice. 
and uh, I just want to make sure that everyone is very clear that that's illegal. It's a class I felony for doing so. And we have lots of uh, checks and balances in place to prevent that from happening. So when a person votes by any method, it's marked in our system. So if you vote absentee by mail and then show up at an in-person, whether it's during early voting on our election day, it's marked in our system and it won't actually allow you to vote. And vice versa. If you decide you don't want to vote your absentee ballot and you want to vote in person, that's totally fine. If you vote in person, it'll cancel your absentee ballot. We do audits during the voting period as well as after. A lot of people don't know about the period that happens after election day. So everyone uh, has a party, they feel like election day, everything's over, and we're working here at our office very hard for 10 more days certifying that election. So we're doing more audits there. The state board also conducts audits. So they're looking for any abnormal uh, abnormalities also. So they have their own invest investigations team. Provisionals provide uh, additional information. So if somebody went to a polling location and attempted to vote and there was some something went wrong, so the for any reason, then a person would be allowed to vote provisionally. And if we saw a spike in provisional voting, we would immediately know that there was something going on there too. So that's a very nice fail safe that's built into our system. What is provisional voting? What does that mean? Thanks, Max. So when you go to vote in Buncombe County, you show up and you get checked in by an elections worker on the computer and in a computerized registration database. And by the way, all of that equipment is offline. So it's not connected to the internet ever. The tabulators the, that you put your ballot in never ever touch the internet. So that's a, a, another one of our many, many precautions. So, but provisional voting is for, if you did show up and let's say that there was a terrible scenario and some group got a hold of the registration database and blocked a whole bunch of voters from it like maybe it marked them as voted when they didn't uh, didn't vote. Well, we have provisional voting for that case. So if a voter shows up and they they say, "I'm eligible to vote. I know it," then we will offer a provisional ballot, and that will be researched afterwards. So there is always a way to vote. Nobody gets turned away from a polling location ever. So one of the things you mentioned is you spend 10 days making sure that the election had um, was done without any errors. What are some of the things that you do in that verification process? So we do the audits, which means that the we, North Carolina is on a paper ballot system. That's a fantastic way to have a paper trail for, uh, for voting. So we always have that fallback system. That's one thing. We do audits, which means that we make sure that the paper ballots match what the computer says, match what's the number of pieces of paper that you sign. When, when a voter goes to sign, they sign what's called either a one-stop application at early voting or an authorization to vote during election day. So all of those things have to match. That's one thing. That's then a lot we have, of work. Yeah, it is an extreme amount of work. Uh, I'll take a moment just to say that when I started working here at, in Buncombe County elections, I had no idea what work went into providing the right to vote. And I will vote in every election for the rest of my life just knowing how much work it goes in to provide that. Uh, but back to the audit. So we have that audit. Then we have what's called a, a, a random audit. And that is where a two randomly selected polling locations by the state are selected. And we do a hand eye count and make sure that that matches the machine count. 
So when you put your ballot into the machine at a voting location, it's doing the tallying. We will compare it by doing a hand eye count, which is also another time, time intensive process, but it's, a, it's, it's how we make sure that the machines are counting properly. That's after the fact. Before the fact, we do LNA testing. I could go on for two hours on yeah. this. Oh, I, <laughs> so uh, we also do LNA testing before the fact, before the machines even go out. We test every single one to make sure that they're tabulating properly. So are IDs required for voting this year? No, there is a uh, court injunction on the ID law and so no IDs are required in this election. Okay. I'm right now, if you'll excuse me, I'm, I'm not, not paying attention to you. I'm looking at Facebook to see if there are comments. Thank you. I really like questions. So if people have them, please give them. I've been trying to ask them as we go along, but a lot of them we've covered. I think a lot of people missed the topic of conversation about absentee ballots. The idea of, um, if you don't mind to briefly repeat that information in terms of how you can turn it in. Okay, so uh, I'll just go through the whole process really quickly. To get an absentee ballot, you have to request one, and you can do that on an online portal or on a, through a paper form that you find on our website. Once you have done that and we've accepted the request, then a ballot will automatically be sent to you, so you watch for it in the mail. When you get that ballot, it will come with instructions. Make sure that you follow those. You'll need a witness and don't forget to sign the ballot. Once you're done voting, then you'll seal it back in the envelope so it stays secret and you have two options for returning. You can return it in the post office and we recommend that you make sure you do that early if you do. So I would say about two weeks before election day to just make absolutely sure that it gets to us or you can drop it off in person and you have two options for that. What I recommend if you want to return it in person is to come by our office where we have a dedicated line for returning absentee ballots. That's during office hours from eight to five, Monday through Friday. During early voting, you're also allowed to drop off absentee ballots. So if those hours don't work for you, you could do a weekend drop off or early voting is uh, after work hours, so you could use take advantage of those locations. But there's no dedicated line there. The priority is for voting in person at those locations. So if, if you want faster service, stop by 77 McDowell Street to turn in your ballot. And you can only turn it in for yourself or a near relative. If anybody else asks to return your ballot, do not give it to them. We make sure that an ofi elections official is checking in your ballot. They'll have you sign a log and then they'll check it in for you. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. So is there anything else that you can let the people know about voting? I think I just want to wrap up by just giving kind of the, uh, the basic general information, Great. which is there's three things that you can do to get ready. That's make sure you're registered. So go to online and check that or give us a call or stop by our office. And that's true for any of these things. Make sure that you check your sample ballot and do your research beforehand so that you're not spending a lot of time in the polls and that you are just informed at what you're voting on. And then choose how you're gonna vote. And there's three ways to do that. You can do absentee by mail, by sending in a request now, or you can vote early starting October 15th. That goes through the 31st, or you can vote in person on election day on November 3rd. Great, so if you need more information, if you need to know where you can vote, if you need to know how you can vote, if you need to know anything, visit the website, buncombecounty.org slash vote. And if they can't visit the website, call election services at 828-250-4200 or stop by our office at 77 McDowell Street. Okay. Well, Corinne, I think that wraps it up for us. Thank you so much for taking time out of your non-vacation <laughs> uh, yeah. to speak with us about this. And of course, if anyone has any questions, they can uh, visit the website or contact election services after the fact. 
Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. I th this is uh, one of those ways that you can combat the misinformation by coming in, coming to the source and hearing what the real deal is and getting that information out there. So thanks for doing that. Great. Well, thank you, Corinne, and thank you all for watching. All right. Have a good night.